today. Break through for your family this morning. Break through for your city today. Break through for your house. Break through for your business. Break through in your dreams and in your purposes. I just declare today is a day of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Break through in my heart. Break through in my mind. Break through in my spirit. Break through in my soul. Break through in my wings. Break through in my struggle. You are the God. 
and life is in the power of the tongue. So this morning, I would like for you to join with us in making declarations from the word of the Lord over our house, over our families, over the city. I believe that God wants us to bless each other and use our tongue for this cause. So say this with me. My house is blessed. My family is blessed. My health is blessed. My wealth is blessed. Is blessed. Is blessed. My city, my city is, blessed. is blessed. My nation, my nation is blessed. Is blessed. My God, my God is blessed. Is blessed. My house, my house is blessed. Is blessed. My family, my family is, blessed. is blessed. My health, my health is blessed. Is blessed. My wealth is blessed. Is blessed. My church, my church Come on, is blessed. My city, my city is blessed. Is blessed. Let's go. 
tell him I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat for just a second. Amen. Chris, run up here. Hallelujah. This morning we are honored to be with you today. God has given us such an amazing assignment in this season of our lives where we take the message of hope and freedom in Christ Jesus to the nations of the world. But while doing that, God has given us this heart and this and this heart is expressed through this ministry called Dream Life. Everybody shout Dream Life. And that is the ministry where high school and college age youth to come to us to find the Lord, but they're coming out of drug addiction and street life, and gangs and violence, and perverse lifestyles of all kinds, and for many of them to sustain victory. They need a different environment to live in. And God has opened up our hearts and opened up our ministry and our homes. And we have some 95 young people that live with us full time. And many have come, amen, amen. Many have come as a result of our Dream Life ministry. We have about 30 or so that are here tonight, or this morning, rather. And we've got good news. That he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. How many of you believe that he is a liberating God? Amen? Amen. And we share this for a couple of reasons. There might be some moms and some dads and grandparents here. You're believing God for the salvation of your children. Praying for the Lord to bring them out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Out of bondage and into freedom. <laughs> Throughout this morning, we're going to be worshiping as we already have been. You're going to see our young people lifting up the name of the Lord in the dance. And, and uh, just all of the giftings, the creativity that's inside of them. But you're going to hear a story or two of God's chain-breaking and yoke-destroying power. And as you are hearing that, I want moms and dads, grandparents, I want your heart to be filled with faith. I want your spirit to be encouraged today that if God can do it for us, I believe that your house is marked for God's glory and power to be released into your life. Amen. I want you to believe this morning that your whole house shall be saved. I want somebody to just make that declaration. Shout, my whole house shall be saved. Amen. I don't believe that the devil has the last say over your seed. I don't believe it. I believe that the praying mother is way more powerful than the drug dealer. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. I believe it. As for me and my house, we will. Come on, somebody shout, we will. We will serve the Lord. And the second reason why we share this is that I believe that the Lord has set this moment up for someone who need a breakthrough. You, you need God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And you're here today with a heart yearning for the Lord to do something significant in your life. Needing change, needing breakthrough, knowing that how you're living now is not God's intention, that you are born for better. You are created for something greater. That what's happening right now in your life was not what you were designed. You, you weren't designed for this. You weren't, you weren't born for this. You were, God says you're better than this. So I, I want you, as you're hearing what God's done in us, there's a scripture that says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's an awesome way of saying it like this. That when you hear a testimony that points to what Jesus has done in someone's life, that is an indication that that same grace, that same power that was released into that person with the testimony is available for you. That is, you're not hearing the testimony just so that you can walk away and say, oh, that's nice. You're hearing it because God is saying, I want to do that for you right now. So when you hear someone got healed, that's the indication that healing is available today. When you hear that someone got delivered, that's an indication that's on the heart of God to deliver somebody today. He's good. I said, he's good. All the time. <laughs> he's good. And he didn't set this moment up just because it's Sunday. 
He set this moment up because he loves you. And he wants you to leave here changed so that you can walk in the fullness of why he created you. And this morning, we're going to take a moment and hear a heart, hear, hear the heart of a young man who has come through some challenges in his life. I'm proud of him. Yes. And I want you to give Chris a great God bless you as he comes and shares his story right now. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm going to share a little bit of my story with, with you guys who weren't here last night, who didn't get the chance to hear what God has done for me and what he's brought me through. My name's Chris. I'm 23. I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. I grew up in a fatherless home. Just me, my mother, and my sister. I started using drugs at the age of 11, started smoking marijuana. Fast forward a couple years later, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And through that process, I began to learn about prescription drugs and prescription painkillers, and I began to abuse my mother's pills. Before I could ever ask for her forgiveness for doing those things, she passed away from her cancer. So for a long time, I carried the, the weight of depression and anger and didn't know how to deal with it, but except to use drugs. So my drug addiction was spiraling out of control. I dropped out of high school my senior year, was kicked out of my uncle's house, found myself homeless at the age of 19. And I found myself in a homeless shelter one night. And I cried out to the Lord really the first time in my life, just asking him to deliver me from this mess and this lifestyle that I was living in. And that very next day, the Lord answered that prayer. I go out of the homeless shelter. I see an old friend of mine that I went to middle school with. He begins to tell me about Jesus and what Jesus is doing in his life. And he encouraged me to go visit this faith-based program that he was involved in. And I was a little skeptical at first of going to see that. But then I remembered the prayer that I prayed the night before. I was like, okay, this is, you know, this might be the door. I might have to do this. So I go. And as I begin to introduce myself to the men in this program, they tell me they've been praying for me for seven months. Yeah. So, you know, not being a believer, I was just like, you know, what? You're, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> but not knowing that the father of my two nephews and my niece was already in this program. I knew he was in a program. I didn't know that it was that one, though. But God did. So God was already working this out. Seven months prior to me crying out to him. Psalm 107, 4 through 6 says that some wandered in desert waste, hungry and thirsty with their soul fainting within them, and then they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord delivered them out of their distresses. I remember the first time reading that scripture, I broke down because it was like looking into a mirror. That was me. I was broken. I was hopeless. I had no hope. Didn't know what to do with my life. So a couple weeks into this program, I wasn't receptive to the gospel right away. It took a while. But the Holy Spirit began to soften my heart. He began to enlighten me on the truth of who he was. So I accepted Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I started to believe the gospel. I started to proclaim it with boldness to everyone who was around me. And through that... I've seen people set free. I've seen people delivered. But nine months into the program, I let some thoughts get to me, thoughts of fear, thoughts of rejection from prior situations that happened into my life. So I ended up leaving this program. And I found myself right back to where I started. But it was different this time because the Holy Spirit was in me. And the Holy Spirit was pouring identity back into my life, saying, why are you doing this? This is not the calling I have for you. This is not the purpose that I have for your life. I set you free from this. Why are you doing this to yourself? So every day was miserable that I was back out there. I just felt the weight of conviction. But I thank God for that. Because that's not where I stayed. He delivered me out of that once again. Six months ago, a man named Joel Fisher came to Charleston, West Virginia, and picked me up. He took me to Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, 
where our main base is. He's given me a wonderful father, a family. I'm just so thankful for his grace today. So thankful for his grace. I want to encourage this house tonight, or this morning rather, that mothers and fathers, if you have children that are struggling in drug addiction, that you continue to pray for them, continue to go to the Lord on their behalf. And young people in here, if your mothers or your fathers or your brothers and sisters are struggling with the same thing, again, go to the Lord on their behalf. Prayer works and it will never stop working. Come on. So, thank you. Abba, Abba, I have a father who really loves me, Abba. Do you guys believe that this morning? How many of you are glad that you have a father who will never leave you and never forsake you? How many people have a testimony of their own that says you have a father that will never leave you and never forsake you? As I continue to sing this song, I want to just encourage you guys to just really think about what that was for you. Think about what he's brought you out of. And just realize how much really truly love that his arm is not too short that he can't reach into our disgusting situations to bring us out to dust us off and to set us on a path of just purpose it's so incredible amen come on we gotta be glad about that so as we continue i don't want you to pay attention to me to set your eyes and your affections on Jesus for what he's done for you and how much he really, really loves you.
Where's he? Come on, sing it out. I've been fine. Direct, direct, direct. You are a fan. Singing of yourself. Loves me, holds me, holds me up and fine. Keeps me up. Takes very good care of me. On fire, protects me. Stay right here for a moment. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into this. I think now's the time. Let me take a seat for a moment. I heard this scripture in my spirit. I'm gonna read it, share with you what I hear in my heart. The Father's love is extended in this room today. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 starts out saying this, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. <laughs> in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance everybody say inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. In whom, he, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Whereof I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Lord of, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance. If I say inheritance, in the saints. 
that's just good isn't that just good just reading that stirs my spirit but I heard this word preparing for this particular moment please keep just playing that progression <laughs> switching up on me but I heard this word in my spirit the word inheritance I said okay inheritance I've not really talked about this not really dug into this much and I just felt like Lord, I'm to speak to the people of God this morning about your heart for them and who they are in you and that they have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. So as I am looking at this, the first thing that I, f I feel in my spirit that I am to uh, release in this room today and it's, it was really powerful in how Jesse began to sing this song is that... Uh, a person who inherits something usually is an heir and it is important that you know that it doesn't matter how things may look or perceive to you today but you are sons and daughters of the living God you are sons and daughters of the living God because of the spirit of adoption because you've been born again, because you've been regened or regenerated, washed in his blood, you are sons and daughters of the living God. If you believe that, shout yes. And it is important that whatever I say after this, that you hear it and see it through this understanding of who you are are I believe that a thousand lesser evils can be settled and dealt with when you really grasp the understanding of who you are John says now are we the sons of God it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is so put your hand on your heart say I'm a child of God say it again I'm a child of God one more time say it again I'm a child of God you are a son and you are a daughter of the living God let's play a little bit softer a little bit softer a little bit softer thank you you are a son and you are a daughter of God because of that you are an heir and when I look this word up, it says this, that an heir is a person legally entitled to the possessions of another that's mostly received upon the person's death. <laughs> You're the successor. You're the next in line. You're the beneficiary. Because of the spirit of adoption today, you are an heir. There are things that God has laid up for you. There are treasures that God has made available to you because of the position that you now hold in the faith. That as a son and a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, understanding who your father is and understanding that he's, he died for you and because of that, there is a will and a testament available to you. Are you receiving that this morning? You have an inheritance, provision, endowment, a legacy that is passed down. And when it comes to an inheritance, some things are given to you and some things are in you because it's hereditary. Like you got mama's eyes. You inherited daddy's personality. That wild streak that's in you, that's your daddy, that ain't me, that's your daddy. <laughs> Today God says, you have been given a divine inheritance. Some of what God 
want me, wants me to highlight this morning is that some of you, God has, God has given you, you have an inheritance that has been passed to you that now you're able to walk in dominion. You have authority that you don't understand. You have gifts that God wants to stir up, treasure that has been passed to you because of the position that you hold in the kingdom. So these are things that God wants to activate and begin to have uh, in your life that you begin to move into that uh, for one reason or another, maybe you didn't realize just how powerful you are. And I want to say this, powerful does not mean holding a microphone. Powerful does not mean holding this platform, but there is a platform for you in the kingdom somewhere. Ohio needs you to activate what's on the inside of you. That what the Father has given to you as a son and a daughter, God wants you to walk in that so that others can call him Father too. Hmm. Somebody shout amen. amen. Dominion, authority, gifts of the Spirit, administrative gifts, talents, uh, inventions, and dreams and ideas that God wants to release to you today. Really probably the better word is God wants to activate because it's already yours. You already have it. Others God wants to build faith, encourage your heart in that you have daddy's heart. You have daddy's passion for Maybe it is the unwed mothers. Maybe it's the fatherless. Maybe it's the elderly. But you have this natural tendency towards that. You inherited that by your father. When people see your eyes, they see the compassion. When they hear your voice, they hear that sense of refuge and safety. You inherited that from your father has been passed down to you for you to be the loving person or the passionate person or the get it done person that you are that those are attributes of your father some of you have a boldness you don't mind saying it no matter who's hearing it might need to be redeemed a little bit <laughs> God doesn't want you to stop that he just wants it to be used for his glory Oh, hallelujah. Man, you got guts, man. I don't, how could you do that? How could you say that? You're bold as a lion. Yes, because he's the lion of Judah. You've got a confidence on the inside of you. It's been passed to you from your father. I'm going to share this. And then we're going to pray. Now I want you to pause for a moment on this one. I was a worship leader at a church in Decatur, Alabama before I went into full-time traveling ministry. Calvary Assembly of God. There, I was in charge of the choir and the worship team. And in my choir, there was a lady who financially struggled really bad. She lived in a very horrible neighborhood. She had a son and a daughter. Her husband had left her. And she lived in a pretty challenging circumstance, but she would be at choir rehearsal every Thursday. And uh, her name was Sandra. And Sandra loved the Lord. I mean, she would worship, she would go after God. She would passionately pursue God. And if you give her the microphone to sing, she'd sing the roof off the house. She loved the Lord. Children were beautiful people. Raised in the Lord, but she struggled being a single mother trying to take care of her daughter and her son. But she did the best she could. She received a phone call that her father, who she never knew, had passed away. And he had been dead now for some time. And they discovered that he had a daughter and everything he had had been left to her. And she didn't know him. She had never met him. She paid her no attention. So she just got the call and she just figured, I ain't never know my father. I'm not, I don't know what he's gotten. 
I ain't got time for that. So she wouldn't pay attention to that phone call. She, she didn't respond to it. She didn't do anything concerning this call. And so a week or so later, they called again. She ignored it. Then about a month later, they called again, and something in her spirit said, you need to go see what your father has in store. You need to go find out what he left you. So, to make a long story short, she, uh, she gets on the phone, and it's, and it's a, a, a attorney of sorts, and she goes and she meets with these people to find out her daddy was a multimillionaire. And had left all of his riches to her. The understanding of who she was and what was available to who she was changed everything. Until that revelation came, although she was a multimillionaire, she lived as a poor woman. Until the revelation of who she was, who she belonged to, and what she had access to as a result of who she belonged to. She had been a millionaire all this time, but because she didn't realize what she really had, she lived poor. You have a billion dollar Holy Ghost on the inside of you and you still live depressed. You have access as a, as a daughter and a son to unlimited heavenly treasure. Oh, hallelujah. There is no lack. You are not in poverty. Oh, Jesus. You are the son and or the daughter of the most wealthy individual ever. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? You are royalty. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Yet we live sometimes as if we're the exact opposite. And God is calling you. I want to go back to this song, Abba. And God is calling you to a revelation of who you are and what's available to you. In my heart, I feel like there are Sandras in this room. It is time for you to come and see what the Father has for you. What he's left for you. That if you would receive what the Father has for you, you would not have the mindsets and the lifestyle choices and decisions. You would not be in the state that you're in. Even if it appears to be that you're getting along, you're making it work, but God has better for you. Your family does not have to be in the condition it's in. Your mind does not have to be in the condition that it's in. Your heart does not have to stay the way it is right now. You don't have to walk around hurt and in anguish and depressed and wishing things can be different. You have heaven's treasure available to you today. And the Father is calling you to come and find out. Go on the journey with him. And let him show you what he has for you. There are Sandras in this room. You're living beneath what you really have. I 
I believe that this was so important to Paul that when he wrote to the church of Ephesus, he said this, I pray that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God and that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. Open your eyes to know what the riches of the inheritance that's in the saints, what he has. He wants your eyes to be open. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. We're gonna just go for it now. You're in this room and this word was for you. Oh God, you realize how, how much he loves you. You're the apple of his eye. His thoughts towards you. What he feels towards you. But when he died for us, gave his life for us, what he left for us, the, the gifts, the treasure that was made available to us in that moment, what he has for you is so powerful. Today, God wants you to access it. If you would say, God, I want to know. I want to know what you have for me. I know that you created me for better. I know that my family could be better. I know, God, that my thinking could be better. I know, God, that my life can be better than this. That you have so much for me. And I'm not living according to what I know you've designed for me. And I want to know. Because there's no lack in him. When I count to three, if that is you, if this word touched you, God's speaking to you right now in this word. If that is you, when I count to three, you lift your hand. One, two, three, lift them right now. I believe that if you respond to this the way I'm sensing in my spirit, marriages are going to change. The course of life for some of you is, is going to change. Dreams and prophetic uh, declarations that have been released over your life that you have just walked away from. Because life told you it was too hard. Things have happened in your journey that has caused you to feel disqualified. There's no way I can do this. I've blown it. I've been wounded too much. There's no way. And yet you have access to unlimited wisdom, unlimited knowledge, unlimited revelation, unlimited love, unlimited joy, unlimited peace is available to you today. Unlimited wealth. The treasures of heaven where moth can't corrupt and thieves can't break through and steal is available to you today. If you want that treasure, when I count to three, I want you to do what, San what Sandra did when she got the call. She went and found out. At this altar is where we're going to find out this morning. We're going to find out what God has for us. We're going to open up our hearts and say, God, I surrender it all to you. Have your way in my life. Remove everything out of my life that does not line up with my true identity. I'm a daughter. I'm a son. Daughters don't live like this. Sons don't eat from the pigs in pig pens. I don't live like this. This is not who I am. I shouldn't be depressed like this. I shouldn't be angry like this. I shouldn't be bitter like this. I shouldn't be going off like this. I shouldn't be living in a spiritual state of poverty where my father is rich in houses and land. I shouldn't be in this place. When I count to three, if this is for you, and you want to come find out what God has for you, you leave your seats and let's be at this altar and let's seek the Lord and let's let the Father reveal the treasures that he has for you, what you are inheriting by the presence of God. Let him reveal to you, let him open up your eyes, the eyes of your understanding that they may be enlightened. Are you ready? One, two, three. I want you to come. Come now. Come now. Come on. He'll never ever leave me all the time. Loves me, I'm a father. Holds me, I'm a father. Keeps me, I'm a father. Takes care of me, I'm a father. Protects me, I'm a father. Directs me, I'm a father. Provides for me.
11 till about six months ago but earlier in his life he had an encounter with God in the back up in the pig pen but it was different because he realized this is not my inheritance this is not my inheritance addiction is not my inheritance depression is not my inheritance this is not what God had for me six months ago he said I want what the father has for me and we picked him up and he's been six months clean some of you right now are sitting in your seat letting the devil talk you out of your inheritance don't be like Sandra and the first time she got the call she ignored the call don't ignore the call what could you be walking in if you would just answer the call what can the Father release to you today if you would just answer the call? What does the Father have in store for you that either fear or pride or the opinion of man keeping you in that seat when you should be up here as a daughter and a son receiving what the Father has for you? I'm going to throw the net out one more time because I you know the heart of the Father is beating for someone in this room today. This is a great amount of people, but there's still someone else that need to respond to this. You're a son, you're a daughter. And your current life situation does not reflect his heart for your life. But there's more to your life than how you're living it right now. Tell the devil it's over. Turn darkness, I'm done. I am going to receive what the Father has for me today. I'm a daughter, I'm a son. And I want what the Father has for me. So we're going to keep this going for a moment, for a few more moments. I want everybody in this room that need to respond to this, that's still sitting in your seat. I want to encourage you. Shut the mouth of the enemy and hear the voice of your father. Silence every other voice and hear the voice of your father. That's it. Come on, sweetheart. Hear the voice of your father. You need to come. You need to come. The father is calling. The father is calling. He's calling you out of that pain, calling you out of that depression. That is not your inheritance. He's calling you out of fear, calling you out of doubt, calling you out of unbelief. You don't have to live as a person of poverty. But your father has wealth, unlimited wealth for you in the spirit. Come and receive the father today.
today we say in Jesus' name that as daughters and sons of the living God, that you are open to hear the voice of God, that he may impart into you the wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him, that you would know what you have as an inheritance, that you would know what you have access to as a son and a daughter of God, that you would know what you have access to. What the Father has for you will change your marriage. What the Father has for you will change your children. What the Father has for you, what the Father has for you will change the course of your destiny and purpose. What the Father has for you will heal your heart, heal your mind. There's healing being available, being made available to you right now. Access it in Jesus' name. Allow healing to come into your heart. Healing from past wounds, healing from past hurts, healing from past mistakes. Allow the Lord to give you that. Allow, come on, open your heart and, and let him get that to your heart right now. Let him heal your wounds. Let him minister, let him minister comfort and peace to your mind. Peace is available to you. Unlimited, it's not kept off. It's unlimited. Unlimited peace, unlimited peace, unlimited peace. Perfect peace, perfect peace. He, he releases to you today. In the name of Jesus, receive the peace of God. Receive the grace of God. Receive the love of God. Receive the presence of Jesus. Lord, we activate faith in your people. We activate the gifts of the Spirit. Some of you have prophetic gifts. We activate them in Jesus' name. Some of you have the gift of wisdom, the gift of revelation. We activate that in Jesus' name. Gifts of faith, gifts of healing. We activate that in Jesus' name. We activate some of those administrative gifts in Jesus' name that you would use them. Gifts of organization, leadership gifts. We activate in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Dreams, we call them forth. Passions from the presence of God, we call them forth. Some of you had an encounter at a youth camp years ago. Some of you had an encounter at a revival some time ago. And the Lord began to show you things in that moment. And now the enemy has caused you to feel like you can't walk in what God showed you. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We call those prophetic declarations to come to pass. We call those prophetic declarations to manifest. In the name of Jesus, we call forth every desire of God's heart. Every inheritance that you have in this inside of you in Jesus' name, we call it forth. We call the wind of the Spirit to breathe on those dry bones in the name of Jesus that they may see. In Jesus' name, we call forth everything God has promised, everything God has destined, everything that God has in store for you. The promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God are yes and amen. We call it forth in Jesus' name. We call it forth. We break false identities. We break lies that try to tie you to the old man. You're not who you used to be. We cancel the lie of the enemy that says you're nothing, that says you're no good. You be like you're no good mother, father, brother, sister. We curse that thing. We break that lie and we speak the life of Christ. We declare that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You are the daughter and the son of the living God. We declare that over you in Jesus' name. For the next few moments, everybody, if you don't mind, I want you to just fix your hands just with us in the audience. Sitting or standing, it doesn't matter to me, but I want Acts chapter 2 with one accord in one place. Stretch your hands this way. Let's believe God for the breakthroughs that are happening. The Lord is healing people and ministering to people. God, I pray for a download. I pray for a download. I pray for supernatural visitations. Even in their home, when they wake, when they're sleeping at night, awaken them, awaken them in their dreams to show them what you have in store for them, God. In the name of Jesus. 
the power to get wealth. God, we just activate that to establish business. God, that will bring life to the city. We activate that. God, in the name of Jesus, those who have passions to finance revival, to finance missions, we activate that. Those who have passions to help the orphans, those in foster care, we activate that. God, those who have passion, Father, to help with those who are in the hospital, cancer patients, and various uh, diseases that people are dealing with, we activate that. Father, in Jesus' name, those who have passion to deal with the addiction crisis within the community, we activate that. Those who have a heart, God, for those who are homeless, we activate that. God, those in this have a heart, Father, to touch those in the government, to touch those in high places, to minister to people of influence, people who are movers and shakers of the community, gatekeepers, we activate that, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask God that you would give people favor, God, with attorneys, favor with judges, favor, God, with mayors, favor, God, with people who have positions of high places, that they may govern the things of God in this community with wisdom and revelation. Activate that, God. In the name of Jesus, prophetic voices, not just for the house of God, but for people in the community. We activate that, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we stir it up. We stir up every gift. We stir up every God, the treasures that, God, because we're sons and daughters that we have inherited. God, in the name of Jesus, we activate that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Far 
Lord Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song <laughs> of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God <laughs> and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name give me charity I've been born again into a family your blood flows through my veins God 
just a second. Amen. Is the video ready? I can't see. I, it is okay. Praise God. <laughs> Let's go. In middle school and high school, I got into the party lifestyle. Uh, I partied, I did a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, and that led down a road of just me making a lot of bad decisions. I wind up finding myself for three years of my life, um, from 17 to 20, just completely addicted, and it ruined my life. I, at 20 years old, I thought my life was over. When I was about 10 years old, I was introduced to porn for the first time, and it just planted a seed of perversion in my life that I didn't really know was there, but I was a 10 year old girl and I was having all these thoughts and all these urges and all these feelings and I didn't know where they were coming from and I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't tell anybody what happened. I just kind of suppressed it and just went along with life. And when I went to college, because I was so sheltered as a child, I decided to do what I wanted to do and just go crazy and had all this freedom and I decided to just go for it. My biggest influence was in the streets so I got involved with drugs, I got involved with gangs at a really young age. Best friend was murdered at 14 years old and this made my mind really corrupt with the uh, influences I had so I was in trouble with the law a lot throughout my life. By the time I'm 17 years old, I was on probation for the third time in my life. Had no hope, had nothing going on for my future. A righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll get back up again. And so if you read scriptures of David, of Moses, all of them blew it. Now some of them blew it big, made some big mistakes, but he never rejected them. He never counted them out because he knew that as long as they kept their heart after him, they could get back up. And on my birthday at seven years old, my father told me I'm gonna go get you a present. And my father, as my father went to go get me a present, he walked out and I ain't never seen him since till a couple of years ago. Then when I was a little boy, my parents got a divorce and it was when the spirit of confusion was inserted into my life. And, and I met a friend that I, as I was older with my father. And his name was Wayne and his father took me in at seven years old. His father ran with a man out of South Central California named Chucky Williams. So when I was 10 years old in fourth grade, I went to a birthday party. And I was expecting birthday cake, I was expecting birthday balloons, PlayStation games, maybe hide and go seek, whatever is supposed to happen at a birthday party. But at that party, I was raped and molested by several men. Our dream wasn't to be a doctor, our dream wasn't to be a, a lawyer or a football player or an NFL player or NBA player. Our dream was to be one of the biggest dope dealers this world had ever seen. Listen, at that moment of my life, I was in the darkest hour, in the darkest day, and the world was so loud, and the church was so quiet. I catch a charge. I do two years. Wayne catch a charge, and he's up, he, he ends up going to a, he, he ends up going to a team challenge. Nothing worked to satisfy this trying void inside of me, and I tried to change one picture for another picture, and I tried to walk a certain way and talk a certain way, but nothing was working. I tried it in my own power, in my own mind, but it was only by the Spirit of the living God that I could be transformed and changed. Yeah, I didn't grow up in Bible school. I didn't grow up learning the scriptures. I didn't know how to shake it up, make it up, do it up, declare it up, decree it up, sow a seed or tithe it up. I didn't know how to turn this way for the Father, this way for the Son, hey, and then the Holy Ghost. I didn't know any of that. I was so unchurched. And when he starts preaching to me, he starts telling me about God, how God changed his life. I ain't trying to hear none of it. I get a call. And then Wayne was in the team challenge. He was writing letters to his father. Writing letters to his people saying he renouncing the game. They put a gun to the back of my head. They put six to Wayne's head. And they asked Wayne, they said, what do you claim? What do you claim? Wayne took his flag and he threw it on the ground. He took his gun and he put it on the ground. And he said, the only thing I claim is Jesus Christ. They shot him on the spot. So I said, Jesus, I'm gay and I'm addicted to drugs.
drugs. I'm hurting from the aftermath of molestation and rape. Can you help me? And I ran out of words to say, and I just said, Jesus, 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 you help me. I said, God, I just want to fail you. I became so desperate that I said, God, if I don't leave, if you don't show me, God, I'm dead. I'm God did for me what I cannot do for myself. And he delivered me from homosexuality and from drug addiction. He healed my heart from the aftermath of molestation. Oh my God, such a big deal. He paid the price for me to be healed. And now I stand in front of you in Denver, Colorado. Five years sexually pure. And I knew it was so real. Because for the first time in my life, I had, I never, I never had so much peace in my life. Suicidal thoughts. Pornography addiction. Gang activity. Perversion. Rejection. Drug addiction. Hallelujah. EJM, come stand with me. How many of you believe that this generation is worth fighting for? Amen. The gentleman that was on the screen who was in the gangs saw his best friend after giving his life to Jesus get killed by the gang he was in because he would not, he refused to get back into the gang once he came out of Teen Challenge. And, and he watched his best friend confess Jesus as Lord and Savior with six guns to his head and each person holding the gun puts two bullets into him to that confession. Brandon, who had never had any church history up to this point, mother was part of Hell's Angels, dad was a heroin addict and neither in his life. Gang life is all he ever knew. Now he sees his buddy who he had been in gangs with after a year of teen challenge and being set free, confess Jesus. And about, about three months after that encounter, we pick him up. It was not planned. He happened to stumble into a church that he didn't realize because he was high. <laughs> he was high. And God knew how. He even knows how to reach you when you're high, you know. <laughs> he came into our ministry hearing us do freedom, no more shackles, no more chains. And he said, God, if you're real, let one of those guys come and begin to talk to me. And that's exactly what happened. And the first, about six years actually, it was tough. He was in and out, in and out, in and out. Couldn't get it. But it finally clicked. He had an encounter. Today he's preaching the gospel in Ohio, in a Youngstown area. Mm -hmm. He served us for a number of years. God gave him his children back. God has restored his life. And now his children have been raised in the things of God. They're praying in the Holy Ghost, seeking God. He was raised doing drugs. They're raised praying. <laughs> Talk about breaking that generational curse and turning into a generational blessing. That's made possible because of what we're going to do right now. And I want to, I really want to, I don't want to put the need out there like it's in, like we're dealing with right now, but I really want to encourage you to give big today. I really want to encourage you to believe God with us today. 
God is up to something awesome and I want to see addiction broken off of a generation. How about you? I really do. Amen. And I know Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia has been particularly uh, wrecked by this. There are cities in this state we go to where over 50% of it is under an addiction crisis. And we go there and we're, we're pounding at it to see Jesus break in and bring release in, G in Jesus' name. How many of you know that he's bigger than heroin? Come on, he's bigger than, he's bigger than pill addiction. He's bigger than that. So whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you to do, I encourage you to fight the good fight of faith with us through giving. Amen. Praise God. Pastor. Amen. We see the results all the time. I, I can't, I don't even know how many funerals that I've done or that I've been to of people because of addiction yep. in this region. And when you see a ministry team whose heart is to see that addiction broken and you see the testimonies stand before you, let me tell you, this is good soil to plant seed in. These young people, some of you have been able over the last 24 hours to have some connection with them and I would encourage you even when service is done today just to spend a little time talking to some of these young people right here. Hear their story and what God has done in their life. As you sow seed today, I'm believing for harvest. And sometimes we sow seed and we believe for a harvest for us. I'm believing for a harvest for Eddie James Ministries. Yes, yes. I'm believing that God's going to use them in multiplied ways. Not just to meet the need, but I'm believing that God has new areas of ministry and that there are going to be young people that their lives are going to be transformed. And, they're going to, and, and as you saw, their heart, it's to rescue, to raise up and then to release, and release in ministry all around this nation. And so here's what I want us to do today. I've asked you to pray about what you would give, and there's an opportunity here today to be able to bless. And so I hope you've done that. I want to take you to take your offering in your hand, and I want you to stand with me. And then with the other hand, as you stand, I want you to stretch your hand towards Eddie and this team right up here because I want us to pray over them. Would you do that right now? Would you stand up? I want you to stretch your hands this direction and I want you to begin to release blessing and pray over this team. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to join together. Lord, with this team in ministry, Father, I thank you that you indeed are the one that breaks bondages. You are the chain breaker. Father, I thank you for the testimonies that we see right in front of us, that you are the deliverer, that you are the savior, that you're the one that sets free, that you are the one that looses the bonds and the shackles of the enemy. And Lord, we pray, God, your anointing upon this team. Lord, we pray your anointing upon Eddie, upon the leadership, upon every one of these young people. God, that they indeed, Lord, are anointed of you to change a generation. And Lord, that as we sow seed into them, we're play, praying a multiplied anointing. Lord, that we're going to hear testimonies, Lord, of greater things that are done. Father, we're thanking you and praising you that we can be a part of what you're doing in these last days. We give you praise for it, Lord. And we sow seed, believing you for that harvest. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.